right now, the day after this destructive evening and night across the tri-state. I'm Michael Gorgiel, in for Adam Cooperstein. As far as the eye can see, flooding, tornado damage, and sadly, nearly two dozen people dead after the remnants of Ida unleash fury in our area. There's a lot going on, so let's bring you up with the very latest right now. We're just learning now 14 people lost their lives in New Jersey during last night's flooding. Another nine deaths now reported in New York City. In a matter of just one hour, more than three inches of rain fell in Central Park. The previous record was under two inches. Central Park getting a total of 7.19 inches of rain from Ida. That makes it the fifth wettest day in Central Park's history. We have live news for team coverage of this deadly flooding all across our area. We're going to start in Elizabeth, New Jersey with Chris Glorioso, where Chris, we've just learned of the five people found dead in the Oakwood Plaza apartments. Chris. Michael, let me begin. The mayor just made an amendment just minutes ago to that tally. At this point, they believe there are four fatalities two people in their 30s, two people in their 70s, but still a gut-wrenching tragedy here in Elizabeth. Let me set the scene for you. We are on Irvington Avenue in Elizabeth, and you can see this is the remnants from last night. These are vehicles that are yards and yards away from this enormous apartment complex, and the waters from the Elizabeth River just tossed cars like toy boats. Now, as I mentioned, there are those four deaths, but there are also efforts to search the Elizabeth River itself because there are concerns that someone could possibly have been swept up in the river. They're going to use drones. They're going to search the riverbanks. At this point, the only bit of good news is that there are no current reports of people missing. But again, it continues to be a chaotic scene. And when the Elizabeth River crashed over its banks, entire first floor apartments were inundated. The fire director says hundreds of people were evacuated last night. As I said, though, they were unable to get to those four people that died, two of them in their 70s, two of them in their 30s. 600 people in this complex now homeless. The mayor says they are preparing three schools as shelters, but there are real concerns about COVID spread if they have people congregating in those those shelters, so they are attempting to expedite housing vouchers for people that may be able to get housing elsewhere. Needless to say, the residents here are experiencing intense grief and frustration. They put the sandbags down. The water was just so uh, overwhelming that the water came into my apartment. We need shelter. We need food. We need clothes. We need it all. Cars, everything. This whole area was flooded. We want to hear the water just go shush. So we all trying to evacuate. And as once again, I know FEMA, nobody's here. Back live in Elizabeth, where you are looking at a series of school buses. Those buses lined up to offer people rides to those temporary shelters at public schools if people are willing to take those buses. But at this point, we've talked to a lot of the residents here. They say they are very concerned about potential COVID spread. So many of them wondering where they're going to be sleeping tonight. Many of them experienced absolute gut-wrenching scenes last night, not only seeing those rescue crews finally getting into units where they found the four people who were confirmed dead, but also people barely making it out of those first floor units. Uh, it's just a very difficult scene out here. Tensions are running high. Uh, we're going to continue to bring you updates, but this is just an awful scene in Elizabeth, New Jersey. For now, reporting live, Chris Glorioso, News 4 New York. Chris, thank you very much for that. We want to go to another difficult scene. This is Jamaica, Queens, where there are two confirmed deaths in a basement apartment. News Force Paisley Chang has been there all morning long. Paisley, uh, uh, Senator Schumer, Governor Hoko, Borough President Richards, yeah. and of course Mayor de Blasio, they're right with you. Uh, they've come here because of the tragedy that happened here. That's right, Michael. In fact, this news conference is still underway. Reporters are getting to ask questions at this point. But um, here's a closer look at what we're talking about. This is the side of the house that a gaping hole was formed by the flood water. Now, this flood water was not just standing in the street. It was rapid. It was moving. Um, it was several feet high, and it gushed. And it was something that they've never seen before. The water gushed into this uh, basement 
basement apartment once it formed a hole, inundating the apartment several feet high. Now, water got into a lot of basements on this street, but the water rushed in so quickly because of the hole that was formed. That's likely why the um, individuals inside that apartment were unable to get out. They really just did not have a chance. And what's even fur what's even more sad about this is that neighbors say the father and the son were able to get out of the house because they were moving cars. They were planning to get out of this apartment and evacuate because of the storm. The mother and the other son, the 45-year-old woman and the 22-year-old son, st um, were still downstairs gathering belongings, and they were on their way up when this hole formed. And once the water gushed in, they really had no chance. Both the governor and the mayor addressed what happened here. We're here today because of a devastating storm that shocked the people of this city. And to the, even the morning after, we're still uncovering the true depth of the loss. And their families must just be in such pain this morning. So to all of them, we offer our love, our condolences, and our wishes for their healing. And we'll be there to support them. The brutality of storms now, it is different. A record set two weeks ago, another record set now, rainfall like we haven't seen ever before. This is the biggest wake up call we could possibly get. Oh, sorry. And that is certainly concerning. And, you know, neighbors here are saying, while this news conference is happening, they're basically shouting at the mayor and the governor, what are you going to do for us? We've had water in our basement this week. Those storms before, we had water in the basement as well. They're telling us that they've been working on the drains on this street for a year now, and still such severe flooding is happening. So we're going to try to get some answers as well. For now, we're live from Jamaica. Paisy Chang, News 4 New York. And so the people there wanted uh, answers as well. Paisy, thank you so much for that. Well, we want to go back to New Jersey. We want to go over New Jersey right now because Chopper Force Kai Simonson has a bird's eye view of the massive footing there. And Kai, we see a rescue boat underway right now. Yes, absolutely, Michael, and this is what we've been seeing pretty much all morning in places like Manville and other sections of New Jersey, we've been telling you. And you can see as I come out a little bit with a camera here, this entire neighborhood is flooded. Manville, New Jersey, I would say about half of the town is now underwater. What strikes me about this event, folks, is the fact of how widespread the flooding is. Places like Manville, places like Hillsboro, Somerville, Boundbrook, New Jersey, unfortunately, we have become to uh, expect flooding like this from time to time here in New Jersey. And we expect lots of flooding in New Jersey from time to time in other areas. But what we're seeing here from Chopper 4 this morning is such a widespread flooding event. Places like Elizabeth, Linden, Cranford, places that we usually don't see this level of flooding happening, that's where we're seeing it. So, again, we're seeing numerous rescues by boat. We saw a little bit earlier a rescue by a state police helicopter. This is off of the roof. We're going to give you some pictures here of some images that we recorded. This is on the roof of the STS tire facility. Facility. This is the corporate offices that are located not far from here in Bridgewater, New Jersey. And you can see an employee, no doubt, this poor guy spent the entire night in that building waiting to be rescued, that building completely surrounded by water. And we are also hearing about further rescues like this that are happening at that building. And we'll get over there in a few more minutes. Back to the live pictures here. You can see, once again, a wider view of Manville, New Jersey. This entire area, we are seeing examples of this. Just absolute devastation. Of course, we will continue to keep you up to date. In shop reform, Kai Simons and Michael, back on over to you. Uh, Kai, just shocking live pictures there showing the extent of that flooding. But what a difference in the southern part of the state. Let's go to New Jersey. News 4 New Jersey reporter Brian Thompson. Brian, you're in Mulca Hill. You had a chance just to talk to Governor Murphy with some of the other reporters there. And in the south, it's tornado damage. Why can the building behind you? Yeah, and, and they've never seen anything like this here. We've rarely seen anything like this in New Jersey at all, and nobody can remember it anyway. I, we have 14 dead across the state. That was what a law enforcement source told me just a few minutes ago. The governor would not use that number. But after he finished his news conference, he went into his uh, SUV and took a call from the president when he came out. I was standing there. I asked him what did the president said. He said he expects the president will expedite New Jersey's request to FEMA for a major disaster declaration. That 
request will go in later this afternoon and we'll see what happens then. Now, as far as the damage here in Mullica Hill, it is substantial. Homes are destroyed, half destroyed. They'll have to be torn down. There's no question about it. The good news is there are no fatalities. The mayor tells me in one house, however, a pregnant woman, eight months pregnant, was just inches away from death when the house collapsed on her, but she did manage to get out. So he was very thankful. No fatalities again here in Mullica Hill. And at this point, uh, they believe that that will be the case throughout the rest of the day. Now, as for the governor himself, he admits he has never seen anything like this, and that includes homeowners. You know, an extraordinary, sadly tragic, historic 24 hours in New Jersey. There's no other way to put it. Um, needless to say, look on either side of us right now, and the impact uh, of this, these tornadoes that touched down. Next thing I know, I, I started hearing like a, a, a noise and I, and I saw through the uh, smaller window that we have in the basement, kind of like a, a, a lot of wind. And uh, I heard a, like a rumbling noise and I quickly just uh, ran to the entrance of the basement and, and uh, yelled to my wife and my son, get down here right away, get down here right away. And then my wife was nearby. Uh, she, you know, she was closing the door and as she was closing the door, the door literally, you know, came off uh, the hinge. Now, here's a closer look at the Lopez house, as you can see. It it looks like parts of it might are, are, are still standing, actually. But I talked to an insurance adjuster, and he said, no, this is, this is going to have to go. There is just too much structural damage to the sides, to the roof, uh, to the bent walls. He said, this is a total loss. Now, back to a live picture. You can see that same house behind me here. And I can tell you this. I just talked to the mayor as we're ready to go on uh, a live here in Harrison Township. And he tells me they believe 100 homes suffered some sort of damage in this community, 20 or so are going to be total losses. That's how bad this tornado was in South Jersey. Live in Mullica Hill, Brian Thompson, News for New York. Brian, before I let you go, I, I want to ask you about something in the exchange you had with the governor. You talked about his concern and the concern expressed by other officials at that press conference about the wider effects of climate change causing these storms and what needs to be done about it. Yeah, and I asked him if this would accelerate efforts to uh, to battle climate change. I mean, New Jersey has been pretty progressive on this. Uh, they want to get all electric cars by 2035. Uh, they're trying to get to net zero in, in that time frame or so. But I said to the governor, does this make you think, because you keep saying that while well, this is happening more frequently and more intensely, is this going to make you think to intensify those efforts, to speed them up some? He said, absolutely. Not with any specifics, but he did say absolutely this sort of thing needs to be accelerated because of the climate crisis. This storm is indicating we're facing just a week and a half after Henri caused all that flooding here in New Jersey. Absolutely. All right, Brian, thank you very much for that. We do want to stay in New Jersey now, but we want to go to Passaic, where the frantic search is going on for a woman swept away in the floodwaters. This is Benson and Main Avenues, and News 4's Miles Miller is there with the very latest. Miles. Michael, we are told that firefighters and sheriff's uh, scuba team uh, officers are going to be going in the water here. You see that they're doing the work of raking away some of that shrub, some of the leaves over there, all in an effort to go in and investigate uh, after a woman uh, was seen atop her car last night, right where you're seeing them working, screaming for her life. I want to show you a video we obtained from a person in the neighborhood, uh, and when there is audio on that video, it is chilling to hear that woman scream for dear life. There were six feet of water in the middle of the main avenue here in Passaic, and people could not do anything to rescue her without harming their own lives. At some point, that woman climbs to the top of her car, and then police believe she winds up in that small brook there that then feeds into the Passaic River. Of course, the Passaic River last night uh, was at a level that uh, was it's just too much for anyone to stand up to bear. Uh, it was, of course, over flooded, uh, and now they're going in uh, in their Zodiac boats to try to see if they can find that woman at any point 
in the Passaic River. Listen now from what her cousin had to say about all of this. Her real sister find the location from Snapchat or something. So that's that's how they come to know like the location shows here. So they were here and they see the red car was was here and then they call the cops. And our firefighters continue investigating the whereabouts of the individuals. The family members were in City Hall. Uh, divers will be back out into the river. Uh, again, we continue to receive reports of incidents that occurred throughout the city. Now vehicles can be repaired and property can be replaced, but loss of life, we can't bring that back. We are inland in Passaic right now, but the major issues happened in the downtown area with a lot of flooding in streets, in the numbered streets, as well as uh, flooding in basements there, uh, as well stranding so many people. We know that 60 people were evacuated from their homes. Uh, we also know that a man died as a result of being swept away in six feet of water. Back now to a live picture here in Benson Park, just to show you what's going to happen. Uh, they are going inside the, that fire truck right there, uh, and they're going to be getting some equipment to get out all they need to go inside that water uh, and see if that woman is uh, still inside that water. They know that it was a report that she may have gone in the water, uh, but they have to confirm that, and so they're going in the water right now. Uh, it's important to note that just about last year, a woman's car did go into the water and she was able to be found on the other side and she survived. That's what police are hoping to happen in this instance. So they're going to go in and do that work right now. We'll have more coming up when I see you again in about a half hour. We're live uh, Miles, in the city of Miles Miller, News 4. Miles, thanks again. Certainly hoping for a positive outcome there.